Okay, there we go. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Lord, thank you for the people who are coming together right now to worship you today, Lord God. I'm excited for today because today is a day where we have a message from God, a message of love, a message of repentance, a message of forgiveness. And I'm sure there's people out there today that have someone to forgive, whether it's yourself, your loved one, or maybe even someone afar that has hurt you. Today is the day for you to forgive them. And so we are praying for you right now that you can find forgiveness in your heart, that you can set the captive free right now. You can find breakthrough and healing in your heart in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to sing the highest praise for you today. Hannah is going to sing right now the highest praise. And as we sing, be reminded that you are praising God for the breakthrough that you are about to have in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. We're going to sing this song called Gratitude. We love because God loved us first. We forgive others because he has forgiven us. God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your amazing love, for your presence with us. You never leave us alone. You're so good. You're so perfect. Thank you, Jesus. All my words fall short. I've got nothing new. How could I express all my gratitude?
just praise you forever. Every moment of our days, God, may we lift up our praise to you. You are worthy. You are wonderful. Thank you, God. Thank you that we join the chorus of angels in heaven, the saints that have gone before us. We are joining in the global cry of worship to you. And we praise you, Lord. We ask that you bring more and more people to see what a wonderful God you are and why we worship you, why we keep our eyes on you, why we trust you, why we love you. God, open everyone's eyes to what a wonderful God you are, merciful, compassionate, strong. You are so kind. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain for us. Thank you for your resurrection power alive in us. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And as you join the saints and join the angels, I hope you join us at Healing Life Church today. You can watch any of our content on Facebook, on YouTube, and we also have a mobile app and a website where you can get tons of teachings and we have short clips um, of micro courses that you can take advantage of, but we're here to just come aside with you, just as Jesus is with you, to just remind you that he is with you. And we're going to go into our series, our part three series of Repentance Pathway by Pastor Dean. So, take it away, Pastor Dean. Thank you. Thank you, Amber and Hannah. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. is worthy and we yeah. are we are so in in love with him aren't yeah. we i mean the the whole purpose of this pathway i love the picture ever put that picture back up the 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 one that you selected for our repentance series the path the pathway you know lord said narrow is the gate narrow is the pathway and narrow is the gate you know and few find it look at that look at those pathways they're narrow and see those little guardrails on the side? That's the Bible. That's that's prayer. That's the Holy Spirit. That's helping us stay on the path because it's like, wow, it's so easy to get lost, especially if you don't have your phone and GPS, you know. But I just love those pictures because it just it reminds me that we are on a path. Okay. So Jeannie, what's the path lead to? There's got to be like an end to the path, a destination, right, to the pathway. What's the, what, what do you, we talked about this. What did, what did we decide was like a pathway destination? Well, I'm not sure I remember us talking about it, but it, <laughs> the destination is eternal life. Is that right? Yeah. With God. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to be and in hell. <laughs> and our family and like party, party time with all those we've lost and will yet lose after our passing um won't be lost at all we'll all be found That's together right. yeah and, and, and joy you know, there's going to be an overriding um state of being a, a way of living good bodies good oh yeah we get to like go back to being young again like i could be like i have full head of hair wow <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And all right. Well, you know, just uh, let's not rush it. Uh, we like it down here. We love you guys. We want to stick around. So even though, but you know, that's the key, isn't it? Love. Yeah. That's, yeah. I think, but you know, it's a special kind of love. There's lots of different kinds of love. You can love. Hey, I had a Corvette once. I loved that Corvette. Vroom, vroom, vroom. It was really hot. You know, Jeannie goes, no, we're not doing that. So I don't have a Corvette anymore. So, well, but, I didn't know you when you had your Corvette. Yeah, you didn't want to know me. I don't think you need one today. <laughs> I was loving the wrong things. <laughs> so that leads us to repentance, right? I mean, that's what we're here about. And, you know, this pathway is to teach us how to love. Love like God loves. God invented love. He is love. He teaches the creation how to love. And we look into the body look into our own cells inside of our body they love us they're working 24 7 to give us life to be able to go and do what we want to do 
you know, our brain remembers all these great things. Our, our, our muscles take us, you know, into walking. And I mean, yeah. I, we, we are like, uh, you know, a, a soul in a, a specially designed, uh, like Android robot. I mean, we're like a biological creation, right? Bioengineered for us to be able to learn how to love. It's all, all it is. Jesus said it. You know what, Jesus, he has these one-liners that are just amazing. If you haven't read the, the red letters in the Bible, if you haven't read about Jesus, you know, forget about what everybody else said. Just look, listen to what he said. Just read the red letters. Just read That's the red letter. Just listen to what he said. That's he is fun. amazing. I mean, and, and I'm not easily impressed. I'm a, I'm a retired orthopedic surgeon. I've been down that road. I've had lots of teachers. I was a professional student. <laughs> for 27 years I learned and then I got the scalpel and I could go and help people but I'll tell you Jesus has these one-liners that are just amazing forgive them for they know not what they do yeah. how can you say that unless you've been alive for millions billions of years and have seen it all and know what's going on in their hearts how can you say that it's just he's amazing Another, what's another one? Uh, another one that he said was, love each other as I have loved you. Yeah. Well, how did he love us? You know, without the tenets of godly love, we're lost. We're lost in a sea of trying to do it ourselves and to love things that just are hurtful. That's what it's all about, you know? When you're, you can't survive this planet without being hurt. I mean, we all die. That's the major hurt. <laughs> and Jeannie, you're exactly right. The, the end of the pathway is Jesus with his arms open, ready to receive us and take us into his kingdom, his life, his love. So I've been trying to figure out what's wrong with this country. I'm a physician, right? So Jeannie, we've been talking about this. And what do you, you know, what are some of the things that you think are, are like things that we could like change and make the country better? Well, it's definitely first thing I think of is prayer. We're praying. It's President's Day weekend. We're praying for our president. We're praying for our country, but we're praying that people see and hear the truth that deception is cleared gone that we break off deception that's right you and know, we see the truth yeah it's it's like uh when someone is addicted and the family knows that they're hurting themselves and hurting the family and they want to tell that person to clean up and you know end their addiction and the person who's addicted says i'm not addicted this is what I want to do. This is how I live. This is my choice. And so the family has to come to terms with that and they call it an intervention. You know, I've, as a physician, had to intervene, especially when people feel like they're a victim and they feel powerless to climb out of the hole, so to speak. You know, and so we come alongside and we love them and we wake them up. And that's hard to do because there's a lot of delusion living in a state of sin and i've lived that life thank god for jesus he pulled me out of it yeah so it's not just addiction that needs an intervention we think of intervention no it's worshiping evil yeah i mean if i was going to say there's one thing that's seriously off in this country it's like the harry potter syndrome i mean we're looking at honoring and venerating and raising up and teaching our children evil ways. A cult. Yeah, a cult, they're hidden. I mean, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's a rebellion against God. Supernatural power, but it's not Holy Spirit power because we know Holy Spirit power yeah. and we want Holy Spirit power. And if the young people who touch Amen. Jesus and are filled with the Holy Spirit and it's happening, that is we need a them. high that is the highest that's high. right let the children lead us out of this yes okay yeah I totally okay so okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna talk a little bit about repentance this is hard 
people don't want to talk about repentance because it it touches a nerve. You know, as a surgeon, if I see a nerve in the operative field, I don't want to even touch it. I mean, I'm gently moving it out of the way. <laughs> That's good. You know, we do not want to injure those nerves. Okay, so so I'm not here to injure your nerves. Okay, I'm not. Okay, yeah, there's Amber going, leave my nerves alone. <laughs> Heal my nerves. nerves. Happy, happy nerves, nerves, happy life. <laughs> yeah. But there is a time, there is a time when you have to learn to look at yourself inside. Look at your, look at your heart. And is it right? Is it right with the love of God? Is it right with loving others? Is it right with your family? Is it right with yourself? And with all of those little cells that are trying to keep you alive, are you loving life? Okay, so. Can I say something? Absolutely, quick? that's why you're here. <laughs> While Hannah was singing and the hallelujahs, I felt like we are never forgiven enough. We are never forgiving others enough that there's it is the onion and it, it's being peeled and i had this overwhelming feeling of forgiving myself as that singing hannah as you were just saying the words and it's so one of the hardest no things to do is where to, we're at is the hardest thing to do is because you think about all the sin that you went through and all the stuff that you've done to hurt other people and hurt where yourself you fell short and, oh terrible mm -hmm. but you know what the cross is like a a milestone in the pathway yeah. as you're walking through this pathway of life and learning to repent learning to forgive and to love the cross is like a gateway it's Jesus created this pathway and he created this milestone, this, this pathway. It's like a door that you go through the door and you learn that you can forgive yourself. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm being told that I have to hurry up. Okay, enough chat. Okay, we're getting to the sermon part. Scripture. Yeah, okay, here we go. Scripture. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to do is go back to 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Okay, so I initially concentrated on turning from their wicked ways because I thought, wow, this is really an important thing. But then I was looking at, I will forgive their sin. He put that in there before he would heal the land. Okay, so how does he forgive sin? He doesn't forgive sin just because you ask him. He's a lot wiser. He is a wise father. And he says, if you want to be forgiven for your sin, you have to repent. You have to change your ways, your wicked ways. I will help you to learn not to do those things that hurt you and hurt your family and hurt your country. I will teach you but you have to love me. <laughs> I don't work with people who hate me. It's like, you want to hate me? Go have your own life. Yeah, I gave you a life. Go and live it. Hopefully you'll wake up and learn your mistakes. But with him, it changes everything. Okay, so we, just to review, over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about repentance, and we know that Jesus called his, he, he called us to repentance, and he taught his disciples how to teach people how to repent, for them to repent themselves and to teach others. Okay, so we're going to look at the five steps to true repentance. Number one, recognize that you're sinning. Uh, that's, that's intervention. That's conviction. That's how to figure out that you're in a mess, that you're doing something that's hurting yourself and others. Regret it. Say, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to shoot up. I don't want to commit adultery. I don't want to lie steal and murder i mean i don't want to break the commandments that's the i'm sorry that's the i'm sorry part then ask for help and begin to restore sin's damage you can't do it alone it's in relationship this all is in relationship relationship with god and with each other yeah. then you wake up to the fact that other people are doing it too <laughs> And you're going, wait a second, I learned my lesson, you better learn yours. And you learn not to sin anymore. 
even when they ask you to come and smoke this joint or do whatever, I mean, you learn, I'm sorry, I just don't, I don't do that anymore. And I think you should think about it too. And if it becomes policy, if it becomes a regulation or a law, if the government in its unwise and unethical administration of their power starts to legalize sin, we have to fight it. That's what World War II was all about. We were not allowed to murder innocent Jews, six million of them. I'm sorry, but that is sin, and we will fight it. And that's the resist part. But finally, when you've arrived at the repentance pathway, and you're walking with the Lord, and the cross is right there, and you walk through it, you can rejoice. Yeah. And that's the best part, because you can live in peace, and you can have joy, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, so many blessings. But when I read that Second Chronicles, I saw something in it that really shares my heart. And it's all about learning how to love like God loves. And it's about forgiveness. And this is what Jesus said about forgiveness. Remember he had these one-liners? If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Now, interestingly enough, that works both ways. For that person who has been hurt and for that person who was hurting them, both have to forgive. Remember the Lord said, you have to take the log out of your own eye so you can take the speck out of the other person's eye? Yeah. That's because forgiveness is in relationship. And we all have to forgive each other. Yes, you've been hurt. Yes, you've had a rough life. Yes, you, yes you've been discriminated against. Yes, you are a part of a, a culture or, or a, a community where, where there's violence and there's problems, etc., etc. Well, the solution Part of the solution is forgiveness. But the true solution is that God forgives you mm -hmm. and forgives us mm -hmm. and then gets to work to solve the problem. Like a surgeon, he says, okay, now you guys rest. You can trust me. Everything's going to be fine. I'll do the operation. When you wake up, it'll be fixed. That's God. We can't do this. You cannot have a godless society and expect to be healed. It just spins out of control. And that's what's happening. All right. So where does repentance come in relationship to forgiveness? You know, Jesus was very wise. He said you have to, you have to repent to be forgiven. You have to have a willing heart. You have to say, okay, I messed up. I'm wrong. Help me to be right. Teach me your ways. Teach me how to love. So listen to what he said, right? If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. See? Repentance first, forgiveness second. Even if they sin against you seven times a day and seven times, seven times, seven times, seven, he said, come back to you and say, I repent, you must forgive them. He's not men mincing words, and he's not making it a suggestion. Forgiveness is an integral part of healing love. And if they really want to be loved, and if they really want to be repentant, they've woken up, then forgiveness flows, and healing starts. So, I did a little study on this. And I went to uh, uh, Prager University. I love Prager University. It's a great place. You know, they take a few seconds to go and- You and, can go and, right on your TV. Yeah, and, or and, your, and computer. your computer. Okay, so there's some articles on there on forgiveness. And I studied them and I looked at them and I said, you know, forgiveness is a process. It's not an, it's just not something that you do instantly. You can say, I forgive, but you're going to go through a process, trust me, okay? And it has to do with trust. It has to do with repentance and trust. So let's look at three 
milestones or levels of forgiveness. Okay? Number one, you release the relationship. Okay? You forgive them and you repent of the mistakes that you've made, but they do not forgive you and they do not repent of the mistakes they made. In other words, they're still abusive, they're still hurting you, you're still in relationship with them and it is good. But there's no trust. There's no trust. So that, that's where when God sees a sinner and the sinner's trying to get like a blessing, the God's, and the God's going, well, I'm sorry, but I can't trust you with power. If I give you money, you'll spin out of control. I think it's time for you to learn how to be humble and to trust me. So number one, release the relationship. If, if that person's not cooperating, forgive them and heal your own heart. Don't carry it around as a burden, but don't trust them. Number two, if you get to the point where you can restore the relationship and the person is repentant and you're repentant and you both forgive each other, then you can get to work and you can test out that relationship. You can give them some responsibility, you can give them some money, you can give them some things to try and see how they do. This works really well with kids because you love them and you don't want to lose them, right? right. So you want to hold on to that relationship, but there's some problems to work out and you want to restore trust, okay? Someone commits adultery in your marriage and you work through the process and they become a loyal husband or wife again, you win, you've restored your marriage. Then there's this interesting part where forgive them for they know not what they do. H accidents happen all the time. People make un unknowing uh, mistakes that hurt you. And it really doesn't affect the trust because you know that if they had it to do over again, they wouldn't do it in the first place. And they've apologized. They've gone through the five steps of repentance and you trust them. I make mistakes all the time, Jeannie. You trust me? Yeah, well, you don't make big ones. <laughs> <laughs> I think you learned that earlier in life. Yeah, that well, you know, those big ones, that, that's hard. Yeah. So it's, it's important to be able to preserve love, right? Yeah. Keep the relationship and the love alive, right? So that is, I think, the most important level of repentance when yeah. you get to that stage. And that's what the Lord, that's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to keep you alive, okay? To restore trust in him and to be able to live even though you die. I mean, ultimately, when you're on your deathbed and you're breathing your last, that's where that trust of the Lord really kicks in because you're going into the unknown and he's there with a helping hand and all the angels are cheering because they've just added another person to their family. Go to the light. Go to the light. Okay. All right. So John summed it up really well. Okay. He said this uh, in 1 John, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light in him. There is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. You haven't even started in repentance. You're not even aware that you're in the dark. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. That purifying us from all sin, that's repentance, and that's the pathway. So, if you want to have peace in this country, if you want 2 Chronicles 7.14 to kick in, not only do we need to repent, but we as a nation need to forgive. Wash it clean, like water going under a bridge, like something in our rearview mirror. We're going 100 miles an hour, and we're seeing it disappear. Whew. Back. Forgive, forget, start new with Lord, love one another, and fulfill the second, the, the most the most powerful commandment of all. Love God and love one another. Yeah. That's that's the foundation for a revival in this country. And he set it up. And he's ready to implement it, and he is implementing it. And we will see it. 
I'll prophesy right now, and especially the young who wake up and see what we as elders who are supposed to be wise are doing and say, now, wait a second, you guys. You know, it's, it's really something when your kids come and tell you you're wrong. <laughs> and they're right. <laughs> it's very humbling. <laughs> Sometimes they're right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is what the Lord says. Okay, we have to do our part. And don't look on with approval or in anything that is vile. You know what vile is? It's evil. It's, it's rebelling against God. It's ugly. Hate is ugly. So you hate the right thing. Hate what faithless people do. Have no part in it. But most importantly, forgive. Forgive in your own heart so you don't have hate in your heart. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, and it's not by our power, not by our might, it's not even by our words, it's not even Jeannie and I wanting the best for you and praying for you and loving you. It's by His Spirit. His Spirit. Good one. Okay, the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you safe. The Lord make yeah. you, make His face, His Holy Spirit shine on you and be gracious unto you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, bring peace upon this land. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you all. Okay, in the name of Jesus, I pray for an awakening. An awakening to our own folly. Yes. That we, as, as individuals and as a collective in this country, forgive each other. And ourselves. And ourselves. And don't look to others to be restored. Restitution doesn't come from money. It doesn't come from political act action and, and implementing laws that will favor one over another. Restitution comes from God. Yeah. Bring God back and bring his Ten Commandments back into this country. And then you will see peace. And you will see a revival like the world has never seen before. Come on, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let it come to pass. Yeah. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen.